What is up YouTube? Welcome to the AAF Zone. Today we're going to release the rankings. We had a great week three, so this is definitely exciting. Okay, at number eight we have the Atlanta Legends still at number eight. They were competitive against the Birmingham Iron for most of the game. It was really the second half that uh, changed the game. Uh, Matt Sims started off well. They were making drives, and as you can see late, he threw a touchdown pass. But the offense really wasn't able to do much. Uh, they were able to stop the run, but too many turnovers, too many mistakes. Atlanta is really in the hardest position to win, losing their coach in the beginning of the season. They have a lot to improve on, but let's see what they can do in the upcoming weeks. Coming in at number 7, we have the Memphis Express. And they were in a dogfight against Orlando. Who would have seen this coming? But they benched Christian Hackenberg, put Zach, Me Zach Mettenberger excuse me, in, and he just changed the offense. They were totally clicking. Long pass plays, long touchdown passes. Zach Mettenberger just opened it up. They were able to run a little bit on Orlando, and they played pretty darn good defense for most of the game. But wow, Zach Mettenberger is now, hopefully, uh, if you're a Memphis fan, you're thinking hopefully he's going to be the quarterback for the future because wow, he came out and proved that he should have been starting this whole season. Coming in at number six is a disappointing team. San Antonio dropped a lot. They were pretty much manhandled as the game went on by the fleet. The fleet early, they turned it over. Philip Nelson threw that pick that you're watching now. And Woodside took advantage and threw just a bomb touchdown. But ever since, you know, that point of the game, it really felt like San Diego was the better team. And San Diego surprised everyone. We'll talk about them uh, later. But wow, I did not see this coming. Uh, Marquise Williams came into the game late, kind of opened up the offense. But he is a running quarterback, so it's different for San Diego. I don't know what they're going to do. In the future, if they're going to keep Williams in or put Woodside in at quarterback. But they're going to have to do something because San Diego obviously was able to find something wrong with San Antonio and exploit that and get the big win. At number five, we have the Salt Lake City Stallions. Great win over Arizona. And they're not ranked over Arizona because, well, they did win... Uh, against uh, John wolford list Arizona offense. While John Wolford did struggle early, he is one of the best players in this league, one of the best quarterbacks, certainly. But there are some positives from this Salt Lake City game. Pearson L at wide receiver, Greer Martini here making a pick. The defense, Carter Schultz, uh, they still need to get the kicking game more, more consistent, but now Salt Lake City is a contender in the Western Conference. All right, coming in at number four, we have Arizona. Arizona took the loss to Salt Lake City, but they have an even bigger loss. Loss of quarterback John Wolford. We all hope that he can be healthy for the rest of the season. Um, even if you're a Salt Lake City fan or a fan of the Western Division teams, you want to see him healthy because, you know, he's a great player and you want to see great competition. So we just want uh, John Wolford to be healthy for the rest of the season. At number three, we have one of the biggest risers. Yes, it is the San Diego Fleet. The Fleet looked amazing against San Antonio. See here, Jaquan Gardner making a big run. Gardner has the wheels. The rest of this offense looked great. Philip Nelson got into rhythm. Uh, Nelson Spruce got some action, got a touchdown or two. The defense forced to critical turnovers, and you know they were able to beat out a talented san antonio team also this d line for um the fleet is the real deal they were able to get pressure all game it was exciting to see the fleet the birmingham iron are going to come in at number two and the birmingham iron in the first half this season compared to the birmingham iron of the second half in this season and all of their games it is like it's a totally different team they force turnovers they score touchdowns they build these methodical drives um the d line is nasty they're able to get pressure almost all the time trent richardson is just building up the stats getting all these touchdowns in the red zone uh luis press hasn't thrown a touchdown but obviously what they're doing in birmingham is working so i think if you're an iron fan you just got to trust the process and keep winning these games with your defense 
Coming in at number one, and it should just be no surprise, it's the Orlando Apollos. This defense was able to force critical turnovers against Memphis, and I know that Memphis played a close game, but Orlando is still such a great team. They're so complete. The offense with Garrett Gilbert, who now I think is probably the best quarterback in this league. I mean, watch him roll out here on the run, just deliver a strong arm pass. Wow, beautiful pass. And then Gilbert also has athleticism. I mean, if you look at these runs, Garrett Gilbert is scary. I cannot wait till Orlando plays Birmingham in Birmingham later on this season. I think that's in two weeks. That'll be an incredible matchup. All right, guys, those were the rankings uh, for after week three going into week four. Uh, we had some exciting games this week. Let me know which games were your favorite and what the rankings uh, in your mind should be. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below.